Howdy! My name is Brian and welcome back to another episode of What's in My Mallet Bag. Today I got probably the most popular pair of vibraphone mallets, as well as probably a set of vibe mallets that we've all had in our bag or are currently using. Of course those mallets are the Balter 23R, aka the Balter Blues. Now before we begin, as always, I'd like to say thank you to my patrons. They're right here. Thank you all for supporting me. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can head over to patreon.com slash briancastcole or through the link below. Now, of course, on to the mallets. So as I said in the intro, the Balter Blues are probably one of the most popular vibraphone mallet series. And I think a biggest reason to that is the fact that these are very readily available through many retailers. If I have to say, that's actually the biggest pro of these mallets. Especially as a Canadian, almost all these vibe mallets you see here and even some of the ones you see here in this bag are rather hard to get for Canadians. We don't have a lot of music retailers that stocks percussion equipment like this, so we have to order it specialty online. Now these mallets I have seen in person with some retailers, such as Lon McQuaid, St. John's Music, Tom Lee Music, if you're in British Columbia, they have them. But there's also a lot of Canadian retailers online that will stock these mallets. And of course, buying from a Canadian retailer online means that we don't have to pay the duties and taxes and all the extra shipping that comes from having them come in from the United States, which I'm sure is something that a lot of countries outside of the United States experience and wish they hadn't have to do with all of their mallets. However, these mallets are still readily available even through US retailers. These ones retail for about $28.99 over on the Steve Weiss website. So these mallets, they're a medium hardness in a total series of five, and I'd say Throughout the whole series, I'm not a huge fan of all of them, but these definitely are my favorite mallets from that series. I personally think these mallets have a really good medium hardness tone to them and that they work throughout the whole range of the vibraphone. Now I know some percussionists are saying, well, I like these on marimba as well, or I heard these are good on marimba. Personally, I don't think these are very good on marimba. They're best for vibraphone and maybe some other multi-percussion, but definitely not for marimba. Now another plus for these mallets is that they come in both rattan and birch. I know for a lot of people, they like being able to play with birch mallets just as much as rattan, and so this is a good option for them to have. In addition, Mike Balter, not Balter mallets, did have an XL size shaft, so they're a bit longer for people who want to play with a longer cross grip, or for those who do want to play with them on marimba, get the marimba mallet length. But I don't know if Balter mallet still offers this. I can't find them online anywhere, but you know, it's just a thought out there. Now, despite those pros that I'm a huge fan of with these mallets, I am not a fan of the huge disadvantage of these mallets. First disadvantage is the fact that the heads wear down rather quickly compared to all the other mallets I've had. These are Balter mallets. I had a set of the Mike Balter ones back when I started college and I wore through them rather quickly to the point where the yarn was kind of falling off the head and the mallets weren't matching each other in tone, which obviously when you're spending in Canada at the time was around $50 a pair. I was not a huge fan of, so you can imagine my frustration when that started happening. However, a pro that can come along with that is that if you like wrapping your own mallets, this is a mallet that will give you probably a good opportunity to learn and kind of give you a goal maybe to strive to wear them down even faster. And the other disadvantage to these mallets is the shafts bend rather easily and hold that flex. And of course, this is just for the rattan shafts. Now this can become from dampening and pushing a bit too hard on the mallets, causing a bit of flex or this can be caused by being in a foldy stick bag and having lots of pressure on it, causing them to bend over time. So because of the mallets not so durable abilities, I mainly use these mallets for practicing, you know, kind of like as beater mallets. I might also use them for busking, playing any type of outdoor gig, or maybe a jam session where if I lose one, if it gets damaged by accident, or I don't know, someone sets it on fire at a jazz jam, then I'm not too upset versus if I lost one of my way nicer mallets that cost probably around $60 a pair. However, like I said earlier, the tone on these mallets are really good and that's something that I enjoy quite a bit. I think they sound really nice on the vibraphone. It's just the durability of the mallets I have an issue with. Now, another pro to these mallets is the fact that they are pretty light. They have a good weight to them, you know, not too heavy. I don't feel like I'm lifting, you know, really heavy mallets, but I don't feel like I'm playing with styrofoam balls. I think they're pretty good for a vibraphone player who's learning the instrument or who just wants a comfortable set of mallets. Now, ultimately, the biggest thing that should decide whether or not you wanna buy these mallets is, of course, how they sound. So here's just a quick sound test on the vibraphone of the Balter 23Rs.
you have it, the Balter 23R Vibraphone Mallets. Be sure to let me know down in the comments what you think of these mallets, whether you've owned them before or you're thinking about buying them. Like I said earlier, these mallets are relatively affordable and they help you get a good quality sound out of the vibraphone. If you like this mallet review, be sure to check out all the other mallet reviews I've done. I've linked the playlist down below, as well as check out some of the other videos I do, including some of my performance videos. If you'd also like to check me out on other social media accounts, those are linked down below for Facebook and Instagram. And of course, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can of course like and subscribe as well as head over to patreon.com slash briankscole and support me there. Thank you all for watching. I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a good one.